welcome to the Great Australian Craft Show. Um, I'm Sue Howie and I'm going to be um, showing you um, how to create something really creative in a borrow. Um, I'm hoping to um, give you some of my um, expertise and hope that you can take it on board and do something really nice. Um, thank you to the Great Australian Craft Show for allowing me to do this. Um, it's a pleasure to be here teaching uh, this is my first time teaching at the Great Australian Craft Show, so thank you. Um, if you have any questions during the uh, show, please um, type them in, and I'm standing by to reply to any of your questions um, that you might have during the class. So, and I'm very, very happy to uh, respond to anything that you'd like to know. Um, I'm very giving in that respect so so this is what we're going to be doing today um, we're going to be this is a very very simple um, entry level into borrow um, it's a really nice uh, little project something that's very simple won't take you long but gives you an idea of the technique that's involved so let's put that aside for a minute so what we're going to be doing here's um, the same piece of um, fabric exactly the same and um, I use um, a fabric that's quite um, loosely woven because as a background for this one I do um, I find it works very well um, because I like to uh, frame my edges as you can see I've actually made sure that it was pretty square and I've actually frayed three sides of it today um, just to show you how it um, what it looks like and then I'm just going to later on I'm just going to show you how to do that so um, I've also gone into my stash and just grabbed um, a whole range of different fabrics that I thought might work quite well here today and um, here they are here so we'll um, arrange those cut them arrange them and put them onto the fabric you don't have to use as you can see there I've actually left some of my background free I haven't put fabric on the whole part of it so it's nice to leave some some space um, between your fabrics as well if you wish to do so um, behind here, um, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, this is a really nice old piece. This is quite a genuine. This is a genuine piece of borrow that I bought back from Japan quite a few years ago. Um, just to show you, um, this is the uh, the origins of borrow. Um, it's just pure mending, um, and that's what borrow is. It's about. It's not a technique. It's. It was just. Um, uh, a way of mending clothing and uh, bed linen and all that sort of thing so um, it was born out of necessity really um, not really uh, what we're using it for today what we're doing today is we're actually um, uh, borrow inspired I won't say it's borrow I'll say it's borrow with borrowed inspired uh, because I don't want to take away from the authenticity of what borrow actually is and um, so this is this is the real deal and what we're doing is just borrow inspired. You'll see I've actually, um, I've got a lovely jacket up here too. Um, this was a, um, a jacket that I've had in my cover for quite a few years actually. And um, I really, really liked it. And um, I just wanted to freshen it up so that um, it would just give a new lease of life. And I've actually, I've actually put something on the back as well, um, just a little bit and um, I get quite nice remarks of that when I um, wear that. I think it's really lovely. So you too can do something like that on a piece of, um, on an old jacket or um, on some denim jeans or something like that. So there's all different things. You can do it on bags. I've actually got some bags here that I'll show you a little, uh, a little later on that, um, that you can uh, make your own tote bags. It's a great way of using up your old pieces or your offcuts of um, fabrics that you've had for years and years. Um, uh, I tend to be a little bit more um, selective in what I use, but it's a great way of using up all your stash um, or your old pieces of fabric. And you'll find that most of us are drawn to the same types of uh, fabrics, the same colors of fabrics. 
I'm not such a bright girl. I don't particularly like, I, I do like bright fabrics, but they're not what I use. I tend to use more subdued fab, um, color for, uh, palette, and that's what I'm drawn to. So everything that you've got in your stash will pretty much work very, very well. And I'll show you um, a good example of that in some tote bags that I've got a little later on. So in the meantime, let's get started. I've actually got my piece of um, fabric already cut, and as I said, I've got I've, I've actually frayed um, three sides of it. Also helps to get it nice and um, nice and square as well. So this is what I just do, just to um, to fray the edges. Um, they come apart very very easily, and when I've finished my my um, stitching um, of all my fabrics onto my background, what I'll do is I will actually go around um, the, the edges of all of this particular panel and I'll just do a little zigzag stitch all the way around. Um, I don't know if you can see that there but I've actually zigzagged all the way around there just so that it doesn't fray any further. Um, you just want it to fray as much as what you'd like it to do and no more. So, so there we go. So that was very, very simple. It's a great way of doing cushions this way as well. I've done some borrow cushions. Um, instead of um, actually sewing the seams in, I've actually left them out and I've actually frayed the edges and they look fantastic that way. Okay, so now our, our, um, our background is now ready to go. So I've actually got a whole heap of fabrics here. So. I like to make a mix, um, as you can see with the, uh, with the other uh, piece here, I've actually mainly got some indigos, but I've used some accent colours as well, and I think that helps to bring it to life a little bit. Um, sometimes, you know, you might want to put some green in there or some red, or um, it's whatever uh, takes your fancy. So I quite often once I've actually put them down, um, I quite often fray these as well. Not all the time, but some of the time I'll fray them, um, just as it gives me an, um, a different look as well. If I've got fabrics that um, um, sort of look too precious or new, what I do is, if I want to age the fabrics, what I will do is um, sometimes I'll wet them, uh, I'll wet them quite solidly and I'll put them into the tumble dryer and um, tumble dry them and um, that sort of um, gives the edges a, a real nice frayed, uh, frayed effect and helps to age the fabrics a little bit too. So I'm going to keep these um, pretty much um, a little way in from the edge and um, then what I do is I just start I just start playing and sometimes this can take me absolutely hours to do but it's good fun. So. So don't feel afraid that, or feel that you are not going to be able to do it because it's just fiddling with it. I always like to make sure that I have actually, unless I'm going to leave um, some definite background um, uh, exposed, I quite like, to, I do like to make sure that I have actually overlapped my pieces. Um, because sometimes um, just a little piece of um, background um, showing um, doesn't look as good as if you've um, um, left a whole, a whole piece um, free. So just intermittently, just grab a few pieces and you won't, you won't get this right the first time. Um, you'll, have to, you'll probably have to um, play around with it a little bit. I quite often play for quite a while actually, but it is good fun. Sometimes I have fabrics I think, oh I really don't want to put that, I really don't want to use that, but see how easy it is just to, just to keep um, Placing fabrics, and you can see how this is all almost um, um, covered up. So, so we might put some to the back and put a little bit more to the front. Now I'm going to put some light bits in there just to give it a little bit of 
life in there as well. So that piece is... It's good to put um, stripes in different directions as well. Gives it a bit of interest. It's nice to put two or three of, um, of the one fabric in there as well. Um, it's, it's good for balance. Okay, so I'm now going to put some of this beautiful shibori in here. This will give it, um, it's a really nice piece of um, fabric, this, um, and it just adds life to it. And you can see I'm not measuring anything, everything is all done just random. So don't be afraid to keep changing your fabrics, keep mixing them up. I'm loving this a bit of yellow here, so we might put that in as well. And because I'm doing this freehand, um, I would probably go back later and I'll probably make sure that they're square. You don't have to do them square, rectangle, look circles and triangles um, all look really well. Things put on an angle look fantastic. I've seen some wonderful work done with students who've come up with some very, very creative ways of putting fabric onto background. It looks amazing. Getting harder now. So this is the general idea of um, just playing with your fabrics. I love that little piece of blue fabric, the light blue fabric, so we'll put that a bit closer to the top. I'm liking this little piece here. So you can see how I haven't actually filled up all the pieces. I've got most of it done, but I think I need a little bit more of this lovely piece of shibori in here. It's always nice to have one piece that's um, completely free of an overlap. Um, it, um, it gives it depth, so I, I quite often make sure that I've actually got one or um, one or two pieces that aren't that, that don't have any fabric on top of them. So you've actually created a little bit of depth. up there so we might put another piece down here. Okay I'm not liking that little piece there so we might put something on top of that. Don't be frightened to put just a plain piece on as well. Um, sometimes it's a it's nice to have a breathing um, a piece that just um, I call the breather um, and that quite often just um, works very very well. That just covered up those few little corners all. And the same here, I've got quite a few junctions here, so I might put something just on top of that, just something small on top of that as well. So that's covered up all those. Now we've just about lost that piece there, so...
Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, I would probably normally take a lot longer to um, to make sure that I was extremely happy with that, but in such a short time, um, I'm quite happy with that. I would probably go back and um, square up all of these squares, maybe a little bit further, and I might go in and do some um, and do some fraying of some of the nicer pieces on top. Um, that helps to just give a little bit of character as well. So we've done that. So then what we do is we take a, I like to do, the, this is my preferred method. Um, it's not everyone's preferred method, but it is mine. So I actually take a glue pen. Uh, these are from Soline. Um, they have uh, refills. They're very, they're very good for this type of thing. And what I do is I just put one stroke on the back of each piece of fabric just to hold it there while I do my basting. Now I baste the, um, the top fabrics to the background because um, I want to keep it there um, while I'm doing my sachet coat stitches. So if I put it down with my glue stick first and then it's easy to handle for the basting. You can see how easy this is. It's not difficult, it's very, very easy. And you can come up with some fantastic ideas. Um, I can show you, you know, sometimes um, this type of thing looks really nice as well. Um, just putting some, just putting some, um, some pieces on on corners and things like that. Um, you probably do it a bit better than that, but um, but but it does look very attractive as well. And circles look great too. So it's all about being creative. So we'll say that all of those pieces have been glued down with the uh, glue stick. Um, I use Soline glue sticks. I find they're very very good. Okay, so um, I've actually got some um, normal sewing thread and because I've actually um, glued it down and now, as I said, I'm just going to do some huge, or some very large um, tacking stitches but, and I'm just going to baste it quite well. Um, I like to baste it quite well because I like to make sure that all my pieces stay um, pretty much where I've wanted them to be. So I would take I would take um, as much time as is quite it, that's required because um, it's a good foundation to make sure that it's uh, that it's not going to move bef um, while you're doing your sashiko stitches and of course this gets pulled out once you've done your stitching as well so. So just big stitches. Um, any way that you wish to go, um, there's no right or well, there's no wrong way to go. Um, I always say that um, anything that you want to do in borrow will be okay. Um, the stitches don't have to be um, all uniform. Not like Sasha Co, where I like to have my stitches quite uniform. Um, with borrow, um, you'll find in the authentic borrow, you'll find that um, it was just. Um, designed for mending and there'd be patch upon patch, um, different threads, different stitch lengths, um, no specific pathways, nothing. It was just used for mending. Um, and this is exactly what this um, should be as well. Okay, so that's just one that's just one row of basting that I've done. So just to show you, and I will just keep coming back. Uh, until I've stitched all my pieces down very, very well. Now, um, okay, so once we've done that, well then we move on to doing the stitching. Now, um, I use a single sashiko thread and I always put my knots on top. Girls, I, um, I've been doing that for quite a while. I like the way that um, it gives a little bit of authenticity. Um, I don't care that um, that the knots show. I think it looks really, really nice. It gives a character. So 
I normally start from the beginning, uh, from the middle, and work out. Um, I, I wouldn't work um, from a side. I like to work from a middle because as you stitch um, borrow, what happens is that because you're doing so much um, uh, close stitching a lot of the time, you'll find that um, your background will shrink a little bit. The more thread that you put onto your background or, or onto your pieces, um, the tighter it's going to pull the, um, the uh, background in. So just be aware that if you are um, doing squares for a quilt or something, always cut your background um, at least a half an inch um, bigger than what's required for the pattern so that you've got room to cut your pieces down to the, to the absolute um, proper size. Um, that's very important. Okay, so I'm going to start here and I'm just going to start anywhere. So it's all about, don't worry about um, stitch length. Um, sometimes you'll find that it's, um, it's easier to pull it through um, multiple layers if you've got a, um, a um, thimble on. I haven't got one on today. But. So the same process. Um, always make sure that once you've pulled it through that you stretch your fabric um, so that it stays nice and flat. And as you can see, there's my little knot. And I'm very, very happy with that. I will leave that there. I won't, I won't cut it off. Um, I always start with my um, borrow, I start with a knot on top. Now, there's only a few suggestions that I make with borrow, and I will show you as we go. So, just stretch that a little bit. So I've done one row there, Som and like sometimes I will go over there into the next one, um, it's not a problem. You could actually do a square around one, you haven't got to stitch the whole piece, you could do a, just um, stitch around the edges. Um, you can go over into the next one as well. Um, but I very rarely go to the next row from the top. I don't like that look, I always go to the next row coming up from the back because I find that it looks nicer. I know that sounds very contrary to what real burrow is but um, that's the way I like to do it. So I like to bring it up from the back and then start the row going backwards. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to come back and I'm going to go over the edge. Now. I don't, I ensure that I don't make my stitches exactly the same size because I do not want them to go one underneath the other. If you do that, oh dear, I haven't, I haven't glued that down very well. Okay, so I find that if you put the stitches one underneath the other, it creates a gated effect. And what that does is it creates a bit of a, a valley, and a hill and valley um, um, ridge in your fabrics. And I think um, the offset stitches look so much better. So, so don't try to put one underneath the other. Um, you'll find that it's, you'll get a much nicer effect if you have um, a brick effect. It's, um, but it's all, it's, it's all what you prefer, but this is just my preferred method. As I said, there's nothing wrong, there's no wrong uh, way to do things in borrow. So I'll pull it through, stretch it out. You can go on angles, um, you can do um, circles with your stitching. We can keep going over the edge of this and keep going all the way along here if we want to. Of course if I basted this one down um, very well I wouldn't have this problem that I'm having right now but 
just for time. So as I said, I'm going to go bring it up from the back and go on to the next onto the next stitch. So I'm going to turn it around. And then we'll go back and do the other stitches. And as you can see here, I'll show you in a moment. It, look, some uh, some um, some of my students have, um, do magnificent work, and they will quite often stitch um, stitch some of the designs in some of the fabrics. They'll do crosses um, in these designs. They'll go around the leaf as well. Um, they'll go around a circle. Um, they've done beautiful things. Um, go along the same lines in the stripes. Um, create a gated effect in the, like a, a cross effect in the stripes here. They'll put um, knots here in um, in this type of fabric. So there's all those different things that you can do. Um, um, which is up to you. So, so that's all that there is to borrow. It is such an easy thing to do. Um, nothing hard about it. But it's all in the preparation, uh, getting the fabrics onto your background, and making sure that all those fabrics are, are down nice and tight, so that um, so that you can do your stitching um, as well as you'd like to. So. That is all that you have to do. And as I said, um, after I would finish that, and of course, you know, I would do stitching, and as you can see here in this piece here, you'll see that I've done stitching in all different, I've even left um, um, a piece there as well. Um, I've used um, some different colours of thread. I've mixed two different colours. I've actually got a mustard and a cream that I've mixed up because those colours work very, very well. Don't be frightened to use um, different colours as well. Um, I've actually gone over and done some of the stitching in the in the background as well, and that also adds to the effect as well. So, um, as you can see, I've actually zigzagged all the way around here so that this doesn't fray any further. I don't back it. I find that um, that works just beautifully. Um, I like the organic look about it. I like the fact that, except for the zigzag, that I haven't put this, I haven't put, um, put the machine near it. Um, a couple of other pieces I've actually, um, I've actually got one here, and um, what I've done is I've actually um, done some blanket stitch around the edges of it, um, so j just to finish it off. And I think that worked really, really well. Um, as you can see, I've, I've used a couple of colours on that one as well. And just the blankets here. So the machine hasn't even been near that piece. It's all hand done. Everything is hand done. So that's that piece there. So I'll show you a few. Um, so that's that's your project, ladies and gents. Um, um, very happy. If I haven't explained anything, please send me a message um, while we're um, doing this um, this class, and I'm very happy to get back to you. Now. You can, um, I did a, uh, a sashiko class as well, and you can see where I've actually um, uh, mixed the burrow and the sashiko together in a runner, and it looks extremely attractive, I think. Okay, so just before we finish up, what I wanted to do was just show you um, some different fabrics that I've used on a long run. I've had this one done for quite a while but just haven't got around to finishing. I've got many unfinished projects around this place. So um, so this is using reds and greens and I really quite like it. Um, uh, the main fabric I've used was this floral piece which was good and that was the um, the premise for doing um, the reds and the mustards and things like that. So. This one has been pinned down and is now ready for doing my uh, glue stick and then basting and then I'll be and then I'm going to just do this one with red blanket stitch when it's um, when it's all stitched. So so um, that's a longer piece, very similar to the green one. So okay. So as I said before, um, this is um, at the beginning of the class. I said that most of us are drawn to the same types of fabrics and same colour palettes. 
Um, these are some orientals that I used to have quite a few years ago and I've put them onto the front of a little tote bag and they work extremely well. Um, because they're all orientals, um, they're the same types of designs. Um, the fact that they're all different colours doesn't really matter. On the back I've done a smaller version and I've extended my stitching out beyond the fabrics. Um, that works really well. It's a lovely little bag, that one. Um, this is a very arty looking bag. I really like these fabrics. They're sort of a modern take on um, some, just a modern take on fabrics. I really like them. They've, that, they've come up extremely well on this little tote bag. Um, they all work very, very well, those together. Although there's such a, a different range of colours in there, you can see that the stitching, the sachet coat stitching is what brings everything together. And that's what's so good about Boro. On the back, I've got another, just a small piece here with the fabrics going over the fabrics. Um, and that sort of helps to bring it all together. I really like that. Now, um, in the shop, I've actually got um, some midi rolls, I call them midi rolls, and they're a good range of uh, yarn dyes and um, open weave fabrics that are perfect for um, borrow. They're, um, they're a roll of six inches by 112 inches, oh no, they're, no, by 50 inches, sorry, and um, they work extremely uh, well for borrow. They're lovely to fray as well, so um, you can buy them online. Okay, so look, I hope that I've, I've helped you a little bit in um, the art of borrow. And as I said, if you've got any questions, um, by all means, um, give me a little, uh, a little spiel on the uh, Facebook page. And I'm very, very happy to get back to you and help you in any way that I can. Thank you so much for, for attending my class. Mm -hmm.